اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین باری الخلائق اجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین والحمدللہ اللذی لا یبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالسخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقل ربي يدخلني مدخل الصدق وأخرجني مخرج الصدق وَجَعَلْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانًا نَسِيرًا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد السلام علیکم جمعیان و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather. In remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, we then send our Eid Mubarak greetings to our living Imam, Ajalallahu Ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And to each and every one of you, a heartfelt Eid Mubarak, inshaAllah. We pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that all of our fasts, our ibadat, our hajat are accepted by Him. We pray as well for those who are undergoing difficulties and hardships um, at this moment and in their lives. We pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to relieve them of their difficulties. And of course we pray for the speedy return, immediate return inshallah of our living Imam inshallah. I'd also like to take this opportunity to first and foremost thank uh, everyone who helped make the month of Ramadan beautiful for us. You know, it is, you have to thank the creation after you thank the Creator. And there are many people who tirelessly worked hard during this month to ensure that the rest of us were comfortable. And so it's important that we appreciate the volunteers and the contributors who assisted during this holy month from the management team to the people who helped us serve the food, heated up our food, provided it for us, cooked our foods, the parking team, the security team, and the caretakers. We pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that He bless each and every one of them, inshallah, and that, we, that He give them more courage to continue to serve His creation as well. I want to start with a beautiful tradition by our sixth Imam alayhi salam in which he quotes Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhim as-salam Salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad that he said to the people on the day of Eid al-Fitr Qal ayyuhan nas that O mankind, O people Inna yawmakum hadha yawmun yuthabu fihi al-muhsinun wa yakhsaru fihi al-musi'un that, O oh mankind, this day of yours, this day of Eid, is a day when the good doers will be rewarded for their actions, and those who fell short will feel a sense of regret for falling short. وَهُوَ أَشْبَهُ يَوْمٍ بِيَوْمِ قِيَامَتِكُمْ And this day of Eid 
resembles the most more than any other day than the day of judgment. فَذْكُرُوا بِخُرُوجِكُمْ مِنْ مَنَازِلِكُمْ إِلَىٰ مُسَلَّاكُمْ خُرُوجَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ He says, imagine and consider yourself, visualize that when you left your house, it was actually an analogy of you leaving the qabr and getting resurrected towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذْكُرُوا وَذْكُرُوا بِوَقُوفِكُمْ فِي مُسَلَّاكُمْ وَقُوفَكُمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَبِّكُمْ And consider your standing in prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you are standing in front of Allah for examination. وَذْكُرُوا بِرُجُوعِكُمْ إِلَىٰ مَنَازِلِكُمْ رُجُوعَكُمْ إِلَىٰ مَنَازِلِكُمْ فِي الْجَنَّةِ أَوْ نَارِ And when you return back home, think of yourself going towards your final destination, be it paradise or be it hell. وَعْلَمُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ أَنَّ أَدْنَى لِلسَّائِمِينَ وَالسَّائِمَاتِ أَنْ يُنَادِيَهُمْ مَلَكٌ فِي آخِرِ يَوْمٍ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ أَبْشِرُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ غُفِرَ لَكُمْ مَا سَلَفَ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ He says, know that on the days, on this day, that the least you will receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anyone who participated in this month of Ramadan, that an angel will speak to you directly and give you the good news that congratulations, all of your sins have been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ تَكُونُونَ فِيمَا تَسْتَأْنِفُونَ Now consider how you will live the rest of your life. There are many beautiful points that I think we can elaborate from this tradition. The first point obviously that is very nice, that is satisfying to the heart, is that we have been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so congratulations to, to all of us for this gift that Allah azza wa jal has given us. No matter what baggage we were carrying, no matter some of the things that we had done that, that keeps us up at night, if we are sincere in our repentance, if we are sincere in our reformation, there is no reason why Allah Azza wa Jal would not forgive us for our mistakes. However, how we live the rest of our lives is now up to us. When we leave here and when we continue this day and then tomorrow and the day after, we are either going to be creating our own paradise or we will be creating our own hells. If we go back to some of those habits that we know we shouldn't have been doing, we were good to avoid them in the month of Ramadan, but if we return back to these habits, then all we are doing is creating for us a nightmare that we will have to cope with and deal with in the hereafter. While if we decide on this day to make a commitment to Allah Azza wa Jal, to reform our lives for the better, to change slight changes. You know, I'd, when you analyze, when we analyze our lives, I am confident of this, you know, that we don't have to make major changes. We are people who believe in God. We are people who have accepted the Risala of the final Prophet. We are people who have accepted the Wilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Aimma alayhim as salam. Allahumma salli ala Madin wa Ali Muhammad. We pray, we fast, we do mostly everything. But I do believe that we are all have capacity and capability of just making small tweaks in our lives. And it's these small tweaks that can either be building our paradise for us, or it is constructing our homes in Jahannam. It depends on what we want to do. And so how do we go forward? What is one of the best things we can do? You know, one of the best acts and the most highly recommended acts that will ensure that our our lives are constantly creating this paradise that we will eventually benefit from in the hereafter is an act in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam Ahma Salli Ala Muhammadin Wa Ali Muhammad He advised for us to do in the month of Ramadan Our first Imam asked him Ya Rasulullah Ma Afdalul A'mal Fi Hadha Shahr you know, that what is the best action that we can do, Ya Rasulullah, in the month of Ramadan? Fakal Ya Abal Hassan. He replied back and said, O Abal Hassan, Afdalul A'mal fi hadha shahar 
Al-Wara' an maharim Allah Azza wa Jal. That the best action you can do in the month of Ramadan is to practice piety and avoid sinning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all we have to do. Right? It seems simple enough, but there is it's 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 really important that we understand. You know, the Prophet says, Al Wara an Maharimillah. The word wara from wara ain. It means it translates into many things because of the weakness in the English language. But we can translate it as piety. But it's more of a shield, a defense mechanism. And it's the shield that keeps me extra vigilant and mindful that I don't do anything that will distance me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore I am constantly mindful. Wara is not a, is not a station that I reach like Iman or Taqwa. But Wara is this active action based approach to my life where I look to see and I'm constantly mindful about my environment, my surrounding, my actions and I am diligent in what I do and how I do it to ensure that whatever I decide to do does not distance me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at it in the month of Ramadan we all had wara. Because we were very careful of how we acted with God, how we obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We didn't listen to certain things, even if something came on the radio, we would have turned it off. Something came on the TV, we would have changed. Because we had practicing this, this diligence to ensure that we don't do anything in the month of Ramadan that will distance us from Allah. The expectation is that we continue such a lifestyle outside the month of Ramadan. You know, we have to understand the concept of sin. You know, sometimes we sin, at first the sin seemed big, but if we constantly repeat that sin, the sin doesn't seem as big anymore. But we don't realize that every time we do something, there is an effect that that action is taking place on my heart. And sinning has a way of rusting the heart. And it's not just sinning, because I think some of us may say, well, I don't sin, alhamdulillah. And I think that is the general case for most of us. I have very high husnul dhan about the quality of our iman. Yeah? That I do believe we don't sin. We are not purposely sinners, because that wouldn't bode well for me. Yeah? And so I feel that we have that higher level of, of appreciation of God, where I don't sin on purpose. However, it's not just sinning that rusts the heart. It's also being in an environment of sin that rusts my heart. Right? And so when I live in this world where, for example, certain lifestyles become normal, where alcohol is legal, drugs are legal, things are available, I avoid it. But when it's around me all the time, and I'm not diligent to remove myself from certain environments where that is taking place, the effect of that is that it rusts my heart. It creates a layer over my heart. And the effect of having rust in our hearts is what? Is that it prevents my actions from seeing its true effects. That's what rusting does. You know, rusting in my life doesn't mean that I'll stop praying. No, I can still pray. I can still fast. I will do everything. But the effect that that action should have in my life is not manifested. For example, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. That salah should prevent any type of indecencies and wrongdoing. I've been praying for 50 years. How come I still do things which are wrong? It's because the heart has a rust that is preventing my actions from reaching the epitome of what it should be so that it produces those actions. Think about this, right? That one of the effects of fasting is what? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you will find taqwa, God consciousness. We all found taqwa in the month of Ramadan. We were all mindful of God. We were conscious of God. Why? Ask yourselves why. Because we didn't sin in the month of Ramadan. You see how the effect that is? Yeah, because not only did we not sin in the month of Ramadan, we were conscious about our environment in the month of Ramadan. 
right? The more I am mindful of my environment, that rust begins to leave my heart and I will see the effect of my actions. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, a simple tool for us. We have been granted by God the keys of Jannah by Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah? It is up to us whether we open that door or throw that key away. Because that is in our hands now. God has led us to the water. Whether we drink from it or turn our backs to it is going to be dependent on our actions. And it doesn't take tremendous spiritual exercises to attain piety with God. One simple thing we have to do. Avoid sinning and be mindful of the environment that we live in. If we can do these two things on an individual basis, in our family, in our community, eventually in our entire system, ecosystem, you will find that inshallah we will be raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as those who have been considered to be pious by Him inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wanan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد اللهم صل على أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سبتة الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي على محمد وآل محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد On this day of Eid as it's a day of joy and celebration that joy and celebration is muted because of the difficulties our brothers and sisters in all parts of the world are enduring especially our brothers and sisters in Palestine um, and many other countries like Yemen and Sudan throughout the world we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to relieve them of their difficulties as soon as possible inshallah and we pray that he hasten the return of our Imam because that justice that we seek will be delivered by him and established by him as well. And you know, when we look at these events that we see in our world, after a while there is a sense of, of frustration that begins to grow within us because we begin to see the blatant hypocrisy of what is taking place, the blatant disregard for humanity. 
um, that, is, that is happening in our world consistently and it creates within us frustration and sometimes that frustration may change over to despair you know uh, and shaitan has a way that when despair takes over you know despair is the opposite of hope that when despair takes over shaitan has a way of converting that despair in 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 mankind towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so we begin to ask the questions, why doesn't God put this to an end? Why doesn't God stop this? And it's important that when we find ourselves questioning uh, the actions of God, we have to revert back and take comfort and, and education from our faith. Our faith has provided us the answers to these questions. But it's up to us to try and remember these points at times of despair, because really this is how... Shaitan begins to tear at the fabric of our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And so there are some important points that I think we have to learn from our faith that I would like to share with you Just so that we don't reach the stage of, of questioning God You know, there are ways of questioning God In the Quran, Allah azza wa jal, when he talks about a sense of, of, of frustration that takes place amongst the people The Prophet at that time and the people turned to God and they sincerely asked the question Mata Nasrullah When will the help of God come? This is not questioning the justice of God But that is where we see and desire this help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we are praying for this help to be delivered to us And so it's important that we don't turn that, that desperation into not believing then that God is just for example Or that God is not aware And so there are five points that I want to just discuss with you very quickly The first is that we have to understand And we have to firmly believe that everything that is happening is being witnessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is nothing that God does not see And as such Allah Azza wa Jal does two things He promises number one vengeance yeah? But the time of his vengeance will be when God decides When we look at every prophet's story of the past yeah? Many a times when you look for example even in the story of Nabi Saleh When you look at the story of Nabi Ibrahim Even the story of Nabi Nuh They prayed to God Ya Allah bring your azab down Bring your punishment down But the jawab, the answer from God will always be that Oh Nabi I know best when to bring my vengeance down yeah? God is not in the mood to destroy his creation God did not create us to destroy us Those people who suffer Those people who have lost their lives It is not in vain God is rewarding them as we speak right now right? But at the same time God wants to ensure that everyone is given full potential To hear and accept that message And so number one God's vengeance will come But when God will decide it will come But at the same time We have to believe That the promise of God is there That he will always help believers Allah Azza wa Jal He says in Surah Al-Rum Verse 47 وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ رُسُلًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ فَجَاءُوهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ He says, indeed we have already sent messengers before you to their people And they came to them with clear bayinat, clear evidences And so of course they rejected it And God says, فَانْتَقَمْنَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا We took retribution from those who committed these crimes وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And it is wajib upon us, incumbent upon me to help the believers this is a promise of God yeah? And so when that promise comes, how it comes We have to just wait for that deliverance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And this is our test right now Yes, our brothers and sisters are going through immense difficulties in many parts of the world But our test as well as those who are blessed With the test of security and freedom Is that we do not lose our hope in Allah azza wa jal. So that's number one, rely on that knowledge And when shaitan tries to manipulate us We combat the manipulation of shaitan With the dhikr of what God has promised And God has never gone against his promise The second point that we have to understand About everything that is taking place Is that 
what God is, is beautifully doing is that He is showing us the true nature of those who are oppressors in this world. In time, this is a rule as well. In time, those who have nifaq in their hearts, those who have impure intentions, will show those intentions to, in public. We see this in our own lives sometimes. Yeah, we may have co-workers who stab us in the back. Eventually, it becomes public knowledge. This is what we see in the world that we see. Today, it's become crystal clear the hypocrisy of the Israeli government. It's become crystal clear the hypocrisy of their allies. And the world is awakening to this reality, one that they were sleeping on for far too long. There is hikmah in this. There is wisdom in this. And this is a fact of life that we also have to learn. That if I have nifaq in my heart, if I have rancor in my heart, if I have ugliness in my heart, it will manifest itself and it will show itself and it will embarrass me on the day of judgment. So clean it and purify it. But this is again a promise of Allah. The third point we have to understand and again another sunnatul ilahiyah is that we all have a part to play in this. Yeah? That yes, it's happening in different parts of the world. Sometimes it's happening right outside my world where there are people who are suffering through poverty and other mental illnesses. We all have a part to play. Allah Azza wa Jal has told us, "Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin, hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusihim." Come on, finish my the verses for me. I like it. Yeah, that Allah does not change the station or the hal of a community until they begin to start changing them themselves. We all have a part to play. Right? And there are many things that you and I can do to help those who are suffering. You know, there are ways to donate. But I think more importantly, there are people in our world today who have taken a strong position to be our, our fighters in this cause. There are many organizations, both locally and abroad, who are doing a lot to try to bring the reality to its open. We have to support these organizations and we have to make sure that we are part of that process. Yeah, that is aiding in the end of this zulm wherever it is in the world. And again, this zulm encompasses so many different things. So for example, if there's poverty, I can be an aid in trying to remove poverty. When there's injustice, I can be an aid in assisting those organizations to remove those injustices. The next, stop, the next point is that we, we, should, we can never stop praying. Yeah, we can never stop turning to Allah because Allah answers dua. But Allah, more than anything, loves those dua that come from a sense of pain. Yeah, we should feel this pain. We gave that example when the people and the Prophet screamed out, Mata Nasrullah. And when they got to that point of they couldn't bear it anymore, it was such a big weight on their shoulder, Mata Nasrullah. The jawab is what? Allah inna nasrallahi hasantum qareeb. Indeed, the help of God is close, it's coming, but we need to feel that desperation. And so it's important for us that we don't allow these news cycles to mute our hearts, yeah, to cause our hearts not to care anymore. But we have to find a way to revive it. And the last point is that we have to remember we know how this story ends. Yeah? This has been told to us by God over and over and we know how this story ends it just takes its time right but every time there have been nations like this Allah Azza wa Jal has humiliated them you know I was thinking about this that I was like you know when is the adab of Allah going to come you know now when I ask for the adab of Allah I need to make sure that I'm clear of that adab you know so my actions cannot be one where I am lumped in with that adab but I asked, like, when is this adab going to come? And then, you know, a voice told me that it hasn't been long since the last adab, right? If you think about it, since the time of the Prophet, it's been 1400 years. Nu lived for 2000 years, yeah? And so we are expecting something right now when God is, is far more patient than that. But it will come because every nation, when there were aggressors, those aggressors were humiliated by God and destroyed by God. And this is the promise that we rely on our faith. These five points are essential, that when we have them and rely on them, that we do not despair 
in the promises of Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask, our, we ask God, we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to hasten the return of our Imam. We ask him to forgive the sins of our parents and loved ones. For those who are going through difficulty, that he end their difficulty. For those that have asked us to pray for them, Ya Allah, accept their hajat. And we pray to Allah that as we embark on this new life that he has given us, we are better people and better believers than we started in the month of Ramadan. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Rahimallahu man kara'a suratil mubarakatil fatiha masbukatan bis salati ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Muhammad.